Hi everyone, I am Brosif, a challenger player on the North American server. What I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be sharing my guide on how to play Aurelian Soul. It's the comp I use to get back challenger in set or patch 11.6, so it's very up to date as well. So let's begin with the main core principles of playing Aurelian Soul. First things first, you always want to be playing strongest board early. Don't play a weaker board that has mages in it. Just because it has mages in it, you want to be playing your stronger board whenever you can. You're going to be rolling for your mages when your early game board doesn't cut it, cut it anymore. So for example, if your Triss 2 starts losing rounds, or your Nidalee 2 starts losing rounds, a lot of rounds, and you start losing a lot of health, that is the point where you want to roll. That will usually be around 3-2, 4-1, or if you have a really strong early game board, like 6 Cultists or something, you could roll on 4-5. Don't hold expensive mages on stage 2 that costs you economy. You won't have enough gold to roll for your board later on. So when are you going to need to play this comp? Or when do you want to play this comp? When you get a bunch of rods and the def defensive items, that's when you usually want to play the comp. This comp is forceful every game, especially if you start rod. And getting mage chosen Annie, Lulu, or Vagar are typically good indications that you want to be playing 7 mages early in Soul. A note on Brand and Twisted Fate is that they're generally pretty weak early game unless you already get Annie. I usually don't take it unless if I have Annie because it's very difficult to get a frontline that is strong enough to win on stage 2 if you take Chosen TF or Chosen Brand. What are the strengths of this comp? Well, the strengths are that, firstly, it has a really good matchup into Kale and Tristan and Reroll, and it's about even versus Slayers. The second benefit is that Aesol 1-star can carry you through stage 4 unlike 1-star Kale or 1-star Olaf. And the board can get online earlier than Kale or Slayers, and fourthly, is relatively uncontested, though it is growing in popularity recently. So, let's move on to the composition now. Here are the standard level 8 boards that you can expect to see and play across most of your games. This first one is the standard 7 mage, uh, Siphoners with no spatula at all. So your main core units are going to be all 6 mages, any of them chosen, typically it's going to be Lulu, Vagar, or Aurelian Soul, or maybe Annie. And then you also want to slot in Swain to get three Dragon Souls to give uh, the Dragon Souls on your team more ability power. And also Siphoner, which is, uh, which is basically what makes Aurelian Soul able to run so, much da so many damage items. Uh, now to go over the other variations of this comp. Uh, deviating from the standard variation is you can have... Uh, if you get a mage spat, you can put it on Swain. So you don't usually want to run eight mages. You usually want to drop TF and then put in something like Azir uh, in most cases to help you play around um, to help you play around Aatrox because Aatrox is really hard to deal with this comp. And if you get pulled in, that's really bad. You'll probably lose that fight. Uh, that's the main thing that you want to slot in. Or if you don't happen to hit uh, Azir very early, you can also play other kind of legendaries or uh, either Sajuani or Aatrox just alone to beef up your frontline. But usually you want to be playing Azir. So you put an Azir like that, um, and then the Sand Soldier will go somewhere like that. For some reason, they're not rendering very well. But that's usually how you want to position, maybe something like this. Uh, the next variation of this comp, assuming uh, you don't hit the Mage spat, uh, is you can drop down to five Mages. So you could drop Azir, you could drop Annie, and then instead of... Uh, to beef up your frontline, in this case, you would want to play Aatrox and Sejuani, or Braum and Sejuani, or Braum and Aatrox. If you have two-star Braum, he's really, really tanky. Probably better than any of the one-star um, vanguards. So you could play a board that looks something like this, uh, and you could corner Aurelian Soul if, you're not, if you don't need to play around Aatrox, or if you do, you can swap it like this, just to uh, make sure that it doesn't get pulled in. And this, is, this would be your standard board. If you do happen to have a mage bat and you have vanguards as well, um, you can either drop one of them and go seven mages, or what you can do is you can uh, drop one more mage. So, for example, you could drop Vagar or Lulu, and then you could put another another strong unit like Set, for example, or uh, or Zillion or Yone or uh, maybe a second Swain. There's a lot of things that you can put in if you have the mage bat. It's rather uh, rather diverse in what you can put in. Another thing you can do uh, when playing this composition is you can delay your level 8 
to go for three star Lulu or three star Annie if you have both Annie items and you happen to see five or more on your roll down. Usually if you have four or less, you just try to go eight and slot in the siphoners to round out your comp and also hit early in soul too. But if you happen to have a lot of Annie's or a lot of Lulu's, you can roll for them on level seven to get them three star. Those will make your team more powerful as well. It's usually not worth it to play siphoners until you have at least one Swain. So if you don't have a Swain, for example, but you are level eight, uh, you can typically, you, you wouldn't be playing Morgana, but you could play Sejuani Aatrox. This is uh, so far only six units. So you can put in seven mages. So you could put uh, Annie and TF back in. You just felt the right cost. You can put Annie and TF back in. So you would put TF like somewhere there. And you would put Annie in the front line. And then you would have seven mages and two vanguards. And you can play this until uh, you get your siphoners with your vanguards in the front line. Uh, and that should be uh, fine for level eight as you're trying to get the Swain because it's not always very easy to hit Swain. Uh, and on level seven, you'll usually be playing uh, seven mages with Brahm or Shivana to get three D souls. So, for example, you can uh, sub out, you can sub out Sejuani and Aatrox, and you would have this your your core six mages, and then you would also have Brahm to round out Dragon Souls and also make your front line a little bit stronger. An alternative option is to put in some kind of Elderwood, so you could put in like Rakan or something or any kind of like like Nunu to make your team a little bit more tanky, but Brahm is preferred because it gives you Dragon Soul and it's a little bit of a stronger unit. Okay, let's now move on to the itemization of this comp. So going back to the main core comp, which, use, which utilizes seven mages plus Swain plus Morgana, let's go over what items are good and what items you generally want to be prioritizing in this build. Okay, so the most important item in the entire comp is making sure you get Guardian Angels on Aurelian Soul. The reason Guardian Angels is so good is because it allows them to basically cast one extra time at least and can often turn an entire fight. Aesol has a lot of weird interactions with Jay, like casting while he's reviving or casting while he's dead or casting once before he's reviving and casting once after. Each of these casts can basically get him back to full health with Siphoners which allows him to keep casting and win the fight for you. No GA usually means a bot forward, even if you have QSS and pretty strong uh, items, uh, or, and pretty strong items otherwise, assuming other people are playing relatively strong boards as well. The next item you want to prioritize is Jeweled Gauntlet on Aurelian Soul. So the reason you want to prioritize Jeweled Gauntlet is because it is, it, it is Aesol's best damage item. Uh, it's, it, it just allows his crits, it allows his spells to basically do uh, double damage half the time and also gives him a little bit of AP. Um, and getting just one crit on like a Kale or on an Olaf usually means that you're going to kill it with a second cast. The next item that we can talk about is Rabadons. So Rabadons is also a very good item. It's pretty simple, it gives him a lot of uh, ability power, makes his ability do a lot more damage. You can build Rabadons if you can. Uh, and then, let me just pull up a second Aesol. Other items you could go for are uh, Hand of Justice. It's a pretty good early slam, and it's a pretty strong item on Aurelian Soul. Sometimes it gives him healing, sometimes it gives, it gives him damage. Uh, if you get extra damage, that's pretty good. And also, uh, the last item you can consider going for is Infinity Edge. It makes his crits a little bit more consistent. Only ever build Infinity Edge if you literally already got a Jewel Gauntlet that you can put on Aurelian Soul. Just Infinity Edge is a great, so don't build it just alone. Okay, so now uh, just to address a brief thing, it seems like a lot of players, like the majority of players right now, think that Gunblade is really good on Aurelian Soul. So Gunblade is not like a bad item on Aurelian Soul. However, you would much rather have um, GA Jewel Gauntlet Rabadons or GA Jewel Gauntlet IE or GA Jewel Gauntlet like Hand of Justice or something uh, because GA mostly covers the basic survivability needs that Aurelian Soul has and also putting in Siphoners allows him to get the healing, right? And the thing about Aurelian Soul is that he does so much damage that his healing is usually enough to just bring him all the way back to full, even if you only have the 10% Siphoner healing from, from Siphoners. And uh, if you're able to put a third damage item on him instead of, a, a, a really, instead of a gun blade, that means that he's basically doing more damage, which increases his healing, which means that it basically nullifies the amount of healing that you're losing from not having Hextech gun blade. 
So usually you don't want to be putting Gunblade unless you literally have no other items and also have an extra sword or an extra rod, but you don't find yourself in that situation particularly often. Okay, let's now go to uh, the next uh, unit that's important in this comp is uh, Swain. So Swain is the next uh, unit that you want to be itemizing because Swain's kind of a really strong legendary, especially get it if you get it two star. Now we've already mentioned a little bit that you definitely want to get a mage bat on Swain whenever you can. Uh, even one star Swain with a mage bat is good enough to carry through most of stage four and part of stage five. Uh, it's very very powerful. Other items you can put on Swain are Wormogs because his uh, his alt uh, scales off his health, so he gains more health based on how much health he has. So giving Wormogs is really good. And then just other general defensive items like Dragon's Claw. If there's a lot of de magic damage in the lobby, we'll keep him alive. Um, keep putting on Bramble is pretty good. It will keep him alive. Uh, putting on Titan's Resolve is pretty good as well because Swain is one of the units that can actually get a 25 stacks and still have a good amount of health left. So you can use Titan's Resolve to give him that extra tankiness and also let him do more damage. And then for other kinds of utility items, you can put on things like Ionic Spark uh, and Guardian Angels. Guardian Angels allows him to, uh, if he gets bursted by something, come back, uh, cast again, and then gain like another like 3,000 health. So it's pretty strong uh, to do that. And then lastly, you can put Ionic Spark on uh, Swain. Ionic Spark is pretty good as well. Uh, but Ionic Spark can go on other things. It can go on Annie or Swain. But uh, yeah, you can put on Swain or Annie. Okay. Uh, next, to talk about the other item holders. So the rest of the items, so some, some games you get like four or five items that are AP or four or five tank items in one game. And in those situations, you just want to be putting the excess tank items on Annie. So you can just put like whatever extra Bramble Vests or, uh, or you can put extra D-Claws on Annie. You can put extra Titans on Annie. Those are things that you can all put on her. And then for the extra ability power items, uh, you can move all move all the items that, or like you would play on Aurelian Soul, and put them on Vagar as well. Uh, another tech I forgot to mention is that sometimes instead of playing the actual legendary, if you have two two star A souls, you can play two A souls on your board, and especially if you have GA for both of them, that can be really powerful as well. Uh, that's one thing that you can do. And then just other notes about itemization: uh, when you're playing the Vanguard version, excess tank items will go on Sedge or Aatrox. Usually, whichever one is two-star, if you have both of them two-star, usually Sedge is a little bit better. And additionally, you'll, you want to be making Chalice of Power as often as you can, because it's super strong in mages, all the mages use it really well, and it makes their spells uh, just a lot more powerful. So usually you'd be stacking these on either Lulu or Annie, if you have, uh, or Lulu or Vagar. If you have Vagar chosen, usually it goes on Vagar, otherwise it probably goes on Annie, she uses them a little bit better. And then uh, making Morello early can be pretty good for win streaking. It can uh, allow you to play a little bit better against the Slayers players who has uh, a lot who have a lot of uh, healing. So you can put that either on uh, Swain if you have no items to put on him, or you could put it on Morgana. Usually it would go on Morgana because you tend to want three defend defensive items on Swain. Okay. Briefly on Carousel priority. So if you take a look at most of the good items, well, there's I, I list out a, a ton of items here. But usually you want to be starting Rod, and then uh, Rod is the best, and then Glove and Chain are about equal in priority. Then it's Sword, and then Cloak, Belt, and Tear are about the same in priority, and then Bow is the worst. As you can see, pretty much none of the de desired items want uh, require a Bow, except for maybe Titan's Resolve. So Bow usually becomes a Titan's Resolve, or becomes an early game ZZ Rot to just, uh, it, it would usually go on Annie or something. Uh, to ensure that uh, you're able to use the bow and not have it just be useless, but bows are really useless in this comp. You really, really do not want to get bows. And also, if at any point you can grab a spat, especially early in the game, where you can more or less guarantee that you can get a tier to make mage spat, uh, go for the spat whenever you can. Okay, now let's talk about how you want to be going about the gameplay in this comp. So for early game, uh, let for early game, the best one cost chosens are going to be, uh, let's just open a new one. Uh, the best one cost chosens for your early game are going to be Tom Kench. Uh, Tom Kench, either Fortune or Brawlers. You can go any cultist, so at least a little bit better, but TF is really good because you can put uh, items on uh, TF. You can go any Vanguard, so either Wukong Vanguard or uh, Garen Vanguard are pretty good. Warlord, Vanguard, and Divine Wukong are both pretty good as well. 
Uh, you can go any brawler, so Maokai or Tom Kenshin, as we talked about before. And then uh, if you want to, go, if you come across backline chosens, the best ones are usually um, are usually Trist because Trist can pretty much hold any item in the entire game. Even tank items are okay, but usually you have or hold your ability power items. Uh, Nidalee is pretty good, either Warlord or Warlord or Sharpshooter. They're all good. And yeah, these are kind of the best chosen that you want to go for right now. Um, and uh, if you if you can't pick it, pick up any of these, just try to pick up something so that you don't lose too much health, and then try to sell that chosen on three two. These chosen, if you play around them properly, will usually be able to take you to four one uh, above seventy five or eighty health. Okay, then on to what you want to uh, make for early game. So for early game, you typically want to be uh, slamming things such as Jeweled Gauntlet, End of Justice, uh, or other stronger win streak items. Usually you're going to be starting Rod, so there's going to be, you're, you're going to be making mostly Rod items. So you can uh, also slam things such as Rabadons, that's pretty good on Tristana. You can slam things such as Morallos, which is also really good on Tristana. I'll put these on Nidalee. They're pretty good on Italy too. But Morales is especially good on Tristana, or uh, it's pretty good on Garen as well. There's a lot of item holders you can use for Morales. Other items you can use in addition are Ionic Spark. Uh, you could also use... Uh, so those are the most of the items that you want to be slamming. Oh, I forgot about Locket. Locket's a pretty good early game item as well. Those are the items that you can slam that are made out of the rod specifically. And then for other items, if you happen to get them, you can slam things such as Chalice of Power. Chalice of Power is really strong right now, and it works really, re really well in the Mage Comp. You can make things such as Easy Rot to use up your bows. You can make things such as Guardian Angels to uh, just to, just to help and just just to help uh, your fights a little bit, help keep your carry alive, and eventually move that on to Aurelian Soul. And uh, other things you can make early are Sunfire's Cape to help you win streak early. Um, that would usually go on like Garen or something. And also, uh, yeah, these are the main items you would want to be making in the early game. Uh, if you can make any of them, usually you should try to go for them. Uh, and then on item holders for ASO items, the best item holders for ASO items are going to be, you know, just put these out first, are going to be Tristana, or Tristana in Italy. Twisted Fate is pretty good. So you can use Twisted Fate to hold them, especially if you're playing it in the Cultist composition. Uh, and then you would want to play something such as Teemo. You can play Teemo as well to hold the to, to hold items uh, well as well. Uh, one star Teemo is usually better than one star Nidalee or one star Tristana for holding Aurelian Soul items. Um, additionally, you can use things such as uh, Darius to hold to hold uh, Aesol items. You can use Kindred. Uh, Cannon holds them pretty well, especially to GA. Those are the units that you can use to hold ASO items. And in the worst case, if you think uh, you you if you're not able to make any slammable items, so you didn't hit any of the items listed out in the guide, uh, you can try to five loss streak to guarantee you get your core items like GA, Jewel Gauntlet, and maybe go for a Mage Bat if you don't hit a good chosen unit and you have no upgrades. So that's how you want to be playing the early game. Uh, here's an example of an early game board you can play. Uh, if you get Chosen Tristana, for example, you can play uh, some build that looks like this that utilizes Warlords, uh, utilizes Dragon Souls, utilizes Vanguards. The most important part are these Vanguards and the Sharpshooters that have damage in frontline, and then everything else can be supplemented after. Another example of a good early game comp you can uh, use is you can use uh, you can play six Cultists as soon as you get them, so try to gather as many cultists as you can. Say you hit cultist TF, for example, uh, then you can play Elise, then TF. And then on level five, you can play maybe Jarvan. Uh, and you can put, play a few other things around at your comp, whatever whatever other upgraded units you hit, maybe. You can put in like a random Teemo, or you can put in uh, other cultists. So if you can get up to six cultists, play it immediately. Six cultists is really broken right now, really powerful. Uh, try to play it if you can. So a six cultist board on level five would generally just look like uh, playing Callista. Callista is the strongest cultist for backline damage, but you're probably going to have items for Twisted Fate as well. So you play Elise, uh, Twisted Fate, uh, Callista, and then uh, Vladimir, Pike, and then that would be your core board. You could also replace Callista for Ziver if that's what you hit first.
Okay, so now after the early game, you're going to be looking to play the mid game. So for example, uh, if you hit a weak chosen unit, so for example, let's say you didn't really have many options and you hit something like, I don't know, a Divine Nasus. Divine Nasus is okay, you can take it, but it's not going to be very strong on stage three. You're going to lose a lot of fights if that's your main chosen. So what you want to do is on uh, three, two, you want to be leveling to six, and then you want to sell your Nasus chosen and roll for a stronger chosen. So either something like a Vagar, Mage chosen preferably, you can roll for um, some kind, any Shivana chosen. Silver chosen is okay. Um, Kennen chosen is quite good. Kindred chosen is quite good. Uh, Calissa chosen works, but doesn't work very well with items. Uh, Darius chosen works as well. There's a lot of three star chosen you can go for. And additionally, what you can go for is Annie uh, is uh, is Mage L Lulu chosen or Mage Annie chosen. Those both work pretty well as well, and you can keep those for the entire. If you high roll an early ASOL, you want to try to get ASOL on the board as soon as possible. So say you had some kind of, uh, let's say you had a similar board to what we had with the Warlords in the beginning. So let's say you had Brom, uh, and also Garen. If you high roll an early ASOL, like somewhere on stage three or late stage two, what you want to be doing is you want to probably sub out the Tristana, so because, uh, and then you probably want to step out the Trishana, put in Brand, because that will give you three Dragon Soul, and then put in one more thing for Mage. So usually so usually you can either step out, it'd be probably fine to step out the Nidalee and the Jarvan for uh, something such as Annie or something such as Lulu. Uh, and this could be your basic thing as well. Just make sure you have a decent frontline in Aesol, and Aesol will usually be able to carry you until 4-1, where you're going to roll on level 7. Um, one more piece of advice, or a few more pieces of advice, is to not greed components. Try to make uh, a passable item whenever you can when you have four components on bench. As most items in this combo are pretty flexible, GA being the only real necessary item. Uh, Jewel Gauntlet is pretty good, but Double Hodge is perfectly fine. Rabadon's Hodge is perfectly fine as well. Uh, on 4 1, that is when you usually decide if you want to pivot out of ASO or not. And sometimes it is right to pivot into Kennen uh, Keepers or Vanguard Mystics. If you, for example, hit either of those units. So, for example, when I roll down, if I happen to see a Cho'Gath, I'll pick up the Cho'Gath, not because I want to play it in, in the Mage Aso comp, but if I hit a Mystic Nico or a Fable Nico, uh, especially Mystic Nico because it's a little bit stronger, I will want to be able to play Fable if, it, if, it, if it's necessary. Usually when you're high on health, you don't really need to pivot, but if you're low on health and you happen to hit, uh, if, if you happen to hit a Kennen Chosen, uh, say it's Chosen Keeper, or you happen to hit a uh, a Nico Chosen, which is the only indication where you should play um, uh, Vanguard Mystics, in my opinion, either Fabled or Mystic, uh, then you can pivot and play one of those comps because they use pretty much the same items. Hitting Annie, Lulu, or Vagar Mage Chosen probably means that you can roll less than normal as well because then it's much easier. You have a strong unit that can uh, help carry you through Stage 4. And... That's how you want to be playing the mid-game, approaching 4-1, and then after that is what I consider. Okay, on to the late game. This is going to include uh, how you want to be building your board as you move into the late game, and also it's going to include late game, a short late game positioning guide against two of the most common comps. So on 5-1, uh, you typically want to be level 8 by then, have about 20 to 30 gold to roll at least, or probably 40 plus. Uh, if you've had a pretty good early game, and what you want to do is you want to be playing, uh, you want to be playing a board that will end up looking something like this. Uh, yeah, that will end up looking something like this. Not this many swings though. Uh, yeah, you will have maybe take out TF, and you can play Azir here instead. And on five one, you want to be rolling until you two star uh, Vagar, Lulu, Aurelian Soul. Annie and uh, definitely and Aesol for sure. Um, so it is you're probably going to be rolling until you hit Aurelian Soul two because that's pretty much where you're going to need to win on five one. If you don't have Aurelian Soul two, most of the time your board will not be strong enough to win a lot of those fights. You will start rapidly losing health. So that's one thing to be careful of and be wary of. And then uh, yeah, so on on five one you you want to be rolling all your gold and necessary for Aesol. And uh, if you've held like a weak chosen until, until then, you should sell that chosen as well.
What you can also do is, is you can speed this up by rolling either on four three if you have a lot of gold or four five if you have a little if you had a pretty good early game as well and try to roll for a soul two and uh, roll until you find it. You want to be hitting then uh, pretty early because other people haven't rolled for their a souls yet if they are being contested. If you're not being contested, it doesn't matter so much. If you can beat it to 5-1, that's probably okay. Um, yeah, so that's what you want to be doing as you get into the late game. Make sure you have a soul 2 and try to get uh, Annie 2 or some kind of uh, upgraded front upgraded front line. So if you happen to hit a lot of Aatroxes and Sejuani's, uh, feel free to drop Brand and uh, Brand and Vagar or Brand and Lulu to be able to play uh, your, your Sedge and Aatrox in the front, or you could drop Brand and Annie. There, you can drop a lot of the mages. It just depends on which ones you have two star and which ones you have decent items for. Okay, so now on to the positioning guide. Let's assume this is like this the standard board that you've got. You're a little bit strong because you have the mage bat, but let, let's say you don't have the mage bat. Right? Let's say uh, you let's let's say you don't have the mage bat, and let's just say you have uh, Azir. You don't uh, you have instead of uh, Azir, you have the seventh mage, right? So you have TF instead of Azir. Let's take a look at two example boards and how you would want to position against them. So this is an example of a quite is a fairly standard and tacked in with Aatrox and Sejuani um, Kale board. So first things first, you will want to make sure that you have your Aurelian Soul on the right side so that it will, tar it will instantly target the Kale. But you also want to make sure that uh, you are dodging the Aatrox pull. There is no way to dodge both the Aatrox pull and the Sejuani stun at the same time. So you just take the Sejuani stun, you get hit by it, and that's perfectly fine. Also, uh, getting taunted by Shen isn't that big of a deal. So against this board, what you would want to do is you want to put a, a bait unit on the right side that hopefully doesn't move around too much. So either it could be uh, Aurelian's, uh, either it could be Vagar or uh, usually TF because TF has fairly long range. Uh, and then you would want to position something like this. Uh, and then also what you would want to do is probably put Annie right in front of the of the uh, of the Kale at this angle so that it doesn't splash damage on anything while uh, while your Swain can uh, can uh, distract the frontline for a little while while Aesol builds up uh, mana to shoot at the Kale. Usually with any if you have three if you have two damage items in GA, you should be perfectly fine to knock out the Kale. So you should be able to get onto the Kale right away and kill her. If Kale happens to have GA, which makes the matchup a little bit harder, as long as you proc their GA before they proc yours, and the Kale doesn't get too strong, you should be able to win that matchup. So you just need to make sure you... Uh, and also, what you can do all, uh, additionally is put Swain one to the left, so hopefully hopefully Sidrani walks this way. Uh, hopefully Sidrani walks around like this, cast the stun this way, and it can barely miss a soul. Those are the kind of um, optimizations you can do uh, against Aatrox and Zidrani, which is probably the most difficult version of Kale to play around. Uh, just make sure you put Aesol in the opposite corner and avoid Aatrox as best you can. Then on to the other example of this comp, or the, the other comp that I'm going to do a brief positioning guide for, is this uh, Olaf comp. So this Olaf comp uh, is fairly standard. It's the one that a lot of people are playing right now and has Tristana, Zillian, and, and these units right here. So to play around Aatrox, it works fairly similarly. You just make sure um, you have uh, some, you, you have your bait units in a corner. If they move their Aatrox like this and swap with Sejuani, you what you need to do is you need to uh, you need to swap uh, Vagar and uh, Aesol like that, or at least move them like this and put like Brand here, because then uh, Aatrox will pull these two farthest units rather than Aurelian Soul. Um, so they can do that. You got to watch for that positioning quite carefully. And then additionally, in order to win this matchup, what you need to do is you need to have Aurelian Soul on his very first cast, or he's going to cast twice because mages, but like, I'm going to say first cast. On his first round of casts, kill Olaf and proc his GA. If you don't proc the GA on the first cast, you're going to lose the fight. So you, typically what you want to do is, in this case actually, you'd want to just move to the left side um, with like TF and TF baiting in the corner to make sure... Uh, that Aesol gets to shoot Olaf right away. In order to further help uh, Aesol shoot Olaf right away, if the Olaf is indeed in this spot right here, what you want to do is you want to move your frontline like this, or maybe like this, such that Olaf takes some time, walks over to the Annie right here, and then is just standing here. And then uh, Aesol is going to shoot into the corner into Zillion, and then uh, hopefully knock Olaf out on his first try. And as long as Olaf gets knocked out on uh, the first round of casts, 
that means that when he comes back with GA, he's probably going to be able to melt through your team unless you have a very strong Swain. But when he walks up to the back line, he's going to start hitting Aesol, and then Aesol gets those, both his casts off, and with sufficient damage, you should be able to uh, just kill the Olaf, and that is the point where you win the fight, because then uh, Aesol can pretty much 1v, 1v9 uh, their entire team. Right, now on to other brief positioning things to avoid. Um, if your uh, other brief positioning things that you want to, want to note is against, uh, against Lee Sin or Set, those are the important things that you want to watch for in the late game. Against Lee Sin or Set, you probably want to move Annie in front of Lee Sin or Set. You're, you're mostly fine if they get kicked out. Against Lee Sin, you want to be putting TF and Brand in the corner uh, because if something's in the corner, it's hard. To, it's really hard for Lee Sin to kick it out of the corner. But just whatever you do, make sure that Swain doesn't get hit because he's your main front line for this comp. Against Set, you don't want Swain to get hit because Swain uh, Set's damage scales off the amount of, uh, amount of health that the unit has. So Swain gains a bunch of health and probably has like 3,000, 4,000 health. You don't want him getting set ulted and then killing a lot of your backline right away. So try to move Annie in front in any, in any situation where you can. Uh, and lastly, how to play the late, late game when you get to level 9. So when you get to level 9, uh, what you can look to do is, let's say you have a Mage Bat and you're on level 9. Um, what you want to do is you probably want to drop down to 3 or even 5 Mages to play the stronger units. So let's say you have um, let's say you have Mage Swain right here, and you're you're playing the really really late game, and you're trying to beat someone who is barely capped as well. Let's say they have some mirror two set two stuff like that. What you want to do is you typically want to uh, just you want to keep Swain and Morg for sure, but then you want to drop TF. You can drop uh, Vagar and Lulu, or you could just drop Annie and Vagar, and then now we only have our kind of core five units on the board. You have room to play stuff such as Azir, maybe even two Azirs if you uh, have that many. Uh, you would usually want to put Azir similar to this. You could play this positioning or this positioning uh, to utilize the Chalice. And then what you want to do is you want to add in Set. You want to make sure you get Swain 2 because Swain 2 is uh, probably going to be carrying most, most of the fights. You can add in Zillion 2 if you hit Zillion 2. You can add in Yone for that, arm, for that MR Shred. And then this is an example of a uh, uh, this is an example of a potential level 9 board that you have, and we actually have space for one more unit. So you can put in something like, you can put in like the Vagar, or you can put in some other kind of tech unit like Lisa in to try to kick stuff out, or you can put in uh, Shen for Mystic. That's usually okay too. You get Shen, you get Mystic Adept. Uh, this is an example of a pretty strong level 9 board that you should be trying to hit after you go uh, level 9. You don't want to be playing 7 mages forever into the, into the deep late game, because then you have to play stuff like TF, Annie, uh, Vega, which are not very strong units as you get very late in the game. Okay, so that's my whole guide for Aurelian Soul. If you enjoyed, uh, please subscribe to the channel. Please drop a like. I'd really appreciate that. Also, come by my streams. I stream uh, every day in the evenings in EST, usually after around 7 p.m. So, uh, yeah, that's me. I'm Joseph TFT, and I hope you enjoyed this guide.